All right, I think we are recording. Hello, everyone. Good to see you again. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video lecture, uh, please go up above and watch that one first. So this uh, video lecture is a continuation of that first one. So in the first one, I talk about just the general uh, details of this first week writing sample assignment prompt. In this lecture, I'm going to go more into details about how to annotate a writing prompt. Um, this is something that I try to teach a lot to my students because as I mentioned in the other video, oftentimes when we get a prompt, we have so many ideas of how to do it. Uh, there's so many instructions and details in the prompt that the professor expects of us. And when you have that many different components and that many different elements, it's really easy to just become lost in your own thoughts. And so I always tell my students, you know, if you can annotate the prompt, it can help guide you a little bit in terms of how to start writing. If you're not familiar with annotation, this, this concept, annotation is basically where you highlight uh, a part of a text, you know, or you underline a part of a text, and then you write some thoughts about it. And you write down some details and some notes as sort of reminders or things that you want to reflect on the next time you engage with that text. So one good example of that would be if you've ever read a book or you read a novel and there was a passage you really liked and you highlighted it and you wrote some notes down being like, this is a great passage or, uh, you know, this idea reminds me of an idea in a previous chapter, that's annotation. And so we can apply that idea and that strategy, not just to literature, but also to assignment prompts that we get from any class really you can get it you can apply it to your future writing classes you can apply to uh, any other class so annotating your prompts is a great way of just giving you direction in terms of how to tackle a writing task so let's uh, I want to show you a little bit of how I uh, would typically annotate a prompt so what you see over here there we go this screens a little swished um, what you see over here is the uh, writing 1050 first week writing sample prompt. So this is what I had covered in the last video. So how would someone go about annotating this? Um, I will, you know, I'm gonna put myself in the shoes of a student. So the first thing I see when I look at a prompt, or the first thing I look for, I should say, is some of the key details uh, in terms of like due date, uh, length requirement, things like that, just so that I know before I even start writing and before I even think about the content of the paper, I know what the boundaries are. I know what is expected of me, okay? So if we look at the prompt, the first thing we see here is the due date. So uh, it's Monday, July 6th. So one thing I'll do if I'm annotating is I'll just highlight that just to sort of remind me this is, uh, this is the due date. And then if we look at the instructions down below, um, it says writing a brief 500 words or so essay. So this is something else I would highlight because this tells me what uh, my word count needs to be, okay? I need to aim for around 500 words. Um, so these two components are just, you know, very simple things worth annotating in a prompt, just so you know what the expectations are for this assignment. Um, if we look at the instructions a little closer, right? Uh, it says, use the information provided in the prompt to guide your thinking and organize your thoughts into an argument that includes at least two supporting points. Okay, so organizing your thoughts into an argument that includes at least two supporting points. I'm gonna highlight this, or actually I'm gonna copy it first and then I'm gonna highlight this. And then what I usually do when I'm annotating is I have another Word document open that I just jot down notes in, okay? If this was an actual physical prompt, I would probably just write in the margins, but since we're doing this on a computer, you know, you can open up a Google Doc, you can open up a, a Word file, anything like that. So I'll just copy uh, a detail from, uh, or that excerpt from the writing prompt, okay? Organize your thoughts into an argument that includes two supporting points, okay? So when I see this, one thing that I know is this essay is looking for an argument. It's looking for me, it's looking for me to make a claim, okay? So I'll just write something like, okay, uh, I need a claim for this um, and then the detail about at least two supporting points. Okay, so uh, two supporting points equals evidence, which means I need to do research. 
So as you can see, my annotations are very simple. They're not passages. They're not even complete sentences necessarily. They're just ideas for me to, uh, they're just sort of little details, the little notes that will remind me when I go back and I look at this prompt again. So two supporting, sorry, two supporting points. All right. So uh, that's something that I need, I know I need to have in this paper. I need a claim and I'm gonna need evidence to back up that claim. So let's go back to the prompt. Um, the essay you write should reflect your best effort to produce a clear, organized, and focused response to the prompt. Your audience is a professor in an introductory psychology class you are taking. Okay, so here's another clue uh, and maybe something that I want to pay attention to. So I'm going to highlight this. Okay, then I'm going to copy and paste this over to my notes. Okay, so... Your audience is a professor in an introductory psychology class that you are taking. So this lets me know who I'm writing to. And so if I'm writing to a professor, that means, you know, I'm probably going to have to write in a pretty formal professional tone, right? So, you know, writing to a professor equals a professional formal academic tone. So as you can see, I'm just, I'm just jotting down notes. Um, avoid slang or, um, you know, everyday phrases that I use with friends and family. All right. So, uh, again, a reminder for me to keep in mind, I need a formal academic tone for this essay. Let's go back to the prompt here. So research indicates that mental health issues like anxiety are on the rise for college students across the United States. Um, I won't read this whole section because I, I read it already in the other lecture, but in these two sections here, okay, if you've already looked at this prompt, you can see that there are a lot of citations being mentioned, all right? There's, and there's quotes that are being pulled out from these different sources, right? They're talking about a Time Magazine article um, and we see direct quotes. So I'm just going to highlight, you know, something like this. I'll just highlight this section here. Um, and then if I copy here, okay, um, I'll just make some notes. And then because when I see this, what this tells me is, or what this reminds me of is, um, I might need to include some quotes or excerpts in my from my research as well. Okay, uh, generally, when you're writing in an academic tone or when you're writing an academic paper, you want to find a good balance between paraphrasing your sources, summarizing your sources, and then directly quoting your sources. Um, because when you directly quote a source, you're essentially showing your audience your evidence, right? You're 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 showing it directly to them. Um, Versus if you paraphrase or summarize way too much, you're basically telling your audience the evidence, right? So, but if you show them directly the quote, in my opinion, I think it, it improves your credibility as a writer and it improves your credibility as a researcher. You're showing your audience, you know, this is the exact words, uh, this is the exact section, this is the exact expert that supports my argument. Okay, so I'll just write a note here. Um, Make sure that my own essay has quotes as well that I pull from my research. Let's continue. Um, okay, so let's look at this section here. What are your ideas about the causes of anxiety among college students today from your own experiences and the ideas in Bomar's and Riley's articles? What are some best practices and specific initiatives that universities can pursue to help treat the causes and symptoms of these mental health problems that so many students experience? How do you manage stress and what are some resources on campus that you might use if they were available? Okay, so this is a really, really important section that I want to annotate because there are so many details in here, so many clues in, clues in here about what the professor wants from me. Okay, so let's look at this first one. Um, what are your ideas about the causes of anxiety among college students today from your experience and the ideas in the Bomar and Riley, in Bomar's and Riley's article? So I'm gonna highlight this. And the reason I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna annotate it 
is because this statement lets me know that I am expected to talk about my own experience as well as pull ideas from Bomar's and Riley's articles. So if you look at the bottom of this prompt, they provided the two, uh, they provided links to the two articles that are discussed in the prompt. So this statement here reveals to me that I should probably read those two articles because they're asking me to um, draw on my ideas about the cause of anxiety, but not just from my own experiences, but also from the ideas that are mentioned in the article. So I'm gonna make a note here. Okay, um, I have to remember to include both my own personal thoughts on this topic, but also pull some ideas from the Omar and Riley article. What else is in this section? Let's take a look. Uh, what are some best practices and specific initiatives that universities can pursue to help treat the causes and symptoms of these mental health problems that so many students experience? So I'm gonna highlight this part and I'm gonna go over to my annotations. And the reason I'm annotating this is because best practices and specific initiatives, that tells me I need to think of specific examples, okay? I can't just talk in generalities in this paper. I can't just um, be you know, overgeneralizing and just talking about things in a wide open way. I need to think and I need to do some research into specific practices and specific initiatives that universities can pursue. All right, not just, uh, you know, we're not talking about hospitals, we're not talking about the government, we're thinking about what are some practices and initiatives that universities can pursue. So a note, okay, um, I need to find specific examples to discuss in my essay. Make sure to avoid over generalizing. Um, also, make sure that I only look into university-based practices, okay? Because it's real easy to you know do research and then all of a sudden go off into tangents or maybe look at things outside of the university. You know, those are still great practices and great initiatives, I'm sure. But this prompt wants us to think about initiatives and practices that universities can pursue. So that's something that I need to keep in mind. All right, and then this final statement, how do you manage stress and what are some resources on campus that you might use if they were available? So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna highlight it, go to my annotations. All right. So how do you manage stress? So this tells me that part, how do you manage stress? That tells me, okay, I get to share my personal thoughts and I get to share my personal uh, experiences with anxiety. So sure to talk about my own personal thoughts and experiences. And then it also says, what are some resources on campus that you might use if they were available? Okay, so maybe I can look into some of the things that OU does to help anxiety. Maybe I'll just look on the OU website. I'll look at the services that OU offers. You know, what are some resources they offer? Be sure to look into services provided by OU as well. Okay, now we're moving towards the end here. Remember that this writing sample is uh, not a free write brainstorm or personal journal entry. So I'm gonna highlight this. I'm going to copy and paste that here. So just again, reminding myself, Remember, don't write this essay in a sloppy, casual tone, okay? This uh, prompt is specifically stating it wants a organized, formal uh, writing sample, okay? Uh, so I need to uh, avoid free writing, avoid just little bits and pieces of uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, this also reminds me, you know, 
they're not looking for a personal journal entry, they're not looking for free write, so that means I gotta pay attention to my spelling and editing. So uh, before I turn this in, make sure I read it over for spelling and grammar errors. Okay. Um, and as I look for the rest of this, you should reserve some time to edit and proofread your work. Okay, so that's something we had just talked about. The writing sample will be used to identify strengths and weaknesses. Okay, completion of this activity will count towards your attendance for Wednesday, July 1st class. Um, so I think I'm pretty good in terms of annotations. So if we zoom out a little bit from this screen, you can see this prompt now looks much more uh, detailed, right? There's, it's much more emphasized. There are specific things that when I revisit this prompt, I know to pay attention to. And now when I go back to my notes, I'll zoom out here a little bit as well. These are all the reminders that I have. So as I'm working on this paper, as I'm working on this writing sample, I'm constantly checking and rechecking my notes here. Okay. Do I have my uh, evidence, right? Do I have at least two supporting points? Am I being clear? Am I making an argument? Am I making a, a claim? Okay, I'm supposed to be writing to a professor. How's my tone? Um, you know, oh, okay, they asked for best practices and specific initiatives. So am I being specific? Am I finding specific examples? So the key here is we're always rechecking, sorry, I should probably be over. We're always rechecking this um, as we are writing anything. So this is just a, a quick lesson on annotating writing prompts, okay? Um, you know, I strongly encourage you to do this for our upcoming major assignments. I'll probably record a couple video lectures for those two just to show you what I would annotate, just to give you a sense of how to move through those major assignments. Um, but again, I really encourage you to use this technique, not just for you know, this writing sample and not just for this class, but try it out in all your other classes. Try it out if you're taking another class this summer that has some sort of writing or, or you've been just given instructions. Um, try annotating that and just give yourself some notes. I think you'll find they are really helpful when you uh, are going through the writing process because there's so many things you're trying to juggle at the same time, right? You're trying to make sure you're doing your research, you're trying to make sure your grammar is okay. It can be a lot to handle, but if you have notes, if you have notes like this, let's pull that up. This will help you keep everything organized, okay? Um, if you have any questions, as always, you can email me. Uh, other than that, I will see you next class. Take care, everyone.